So uh, let's take out our notes and open up to this section. A little bit of review from Friday. Uh, find, uh, given the terminal point, uh, find sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine of t, cosine of t, and tangent of t. No, sin is like adultery and coveting. And Okay. All right. Stop talking. All right. So in terms of x, y, and r, what is sine? Sine is your y value, so 12 over 13. Cosine? Negative 5 over 13. So what do I do to find tangent? Y divided by x. Negative 12 fifths. Not too bad, huh? You try the next one on your own. Okay, uh, I have positive root of 5 over 2 for tangent, cosine is negative uh, 2 over 3, and sine is negative root of 5 over 3. Everybody okay with that? Okay, then uh, the next piece that we're going to do, uh, we're going to need some notes for it first. Okay, notes which you do not yet have written down. We're going to actually derive a few formulas. So I want you to go to the very last page of your notes where you have some blank space. And we're going to derive a few formulas. Now, I could just write all these down for you, but you need to see where they come from. So, are you ready to see where they come from? What is that? Oh, boy. Form for a circle centered at 0, 0. I'm in the unit circle, and that's x squared plus y squared is 1. I'm not making anything up, right? Even the formula for a circle itself is the same as the Pythagorean theorem, which I could prove that for you, that that works, if, you, if, if you'd like to sometime, okay? Uh, Terry says no, okay? All right. Got the point. So we got x squared plus y squared is 1. Now, here's where trigonometry becomes really cool. All mathematics is connected, okay? Uh, the whole world can be mathematically explained. But the idea is that in trigonometry especially, we see these really, really key connections. So I want you to see where these pieces come from. We just talked about it. What is x? Cosine. So in other words, I have cosine of theta, that quantity squared. What is y? Sine. quantity squared is equal to 1. Now, it's not written like that. Traditionally, they choose to write sine first, and they don't write it with parentheses. The way that we show this in trigonometry is to write sine squared of theta. That means you take sine of theta, and then you square the result. That's what that means. Plus, cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. This is the first and most important formula that you need to know in trigonometry. I will give these to you on the test. But I think it's helpful to see where they came from. Notice I did not just make it up, did I? Came right from here. Now I'm going to do a little bit of magic. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. I'm going to divide through by none other than cosine squared.
Yes, I did. Got an old theta there. There you go. Sine is the same thing as it's a letter of the alphabet towards the end. Y. Cosine is the same as X. And if you <laughs> fall asleep back there. Help that guy out. Okay, so Y over X is also the same as what did we learn on Friday? Y over X is tangent. So this is tangent squared. Plus What's cosine over cosine? One. One over cosine squared. What's the reciprocal of cosine? Secant. This is your second important formula. Tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared. We get it right from the other one by dividing through by cosine. Now, instead of dividing through by cosine, I'm going to divide through by sine. What's sine squared over sine squared? 1 plus cosine over sine. So that's x over y. Not y over x. It's x over y. Cotangent. What's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. So you can see that we get a third formula that is very important to us as well. 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. I didn't just make them up, did I? We also said that sine of theta divided by cosine of theta is equal to Tangent of theta. Cotangent. You were gone Friday as well? Okay, we talked about that. Yeah. See, isn't it funny now? We talked about it. Don't say sin. People say sin. Don't say caught. People say caught. Got it. So that's my fourth. And, uh, my good friend Ty back there, he said this one. He said cosine of theta divided by sine of theta was, is cotangent of theta. So those are my five really important formulas that we're going to use. And we're going to use them all today. Before we use them, we have. One last piece we need to talk about, and that is our quadrants. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. I knew you all knew that those were the four quadrants. Nobody would need a simple reminder. We need to talk about where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive and negative. And we're going to start with sine. Sine is the y value. So is sine positive or negative in the first quadrant? Positive. Where, if sine is the y value, where else would it be positive? Quadrant 2. Where would it be negative? Very good. Where is cosine positive? Cosine is which value? X. Where is X positive? Cosine of theta is positive, and cosine of theta is positive. 
if cosine is the x value, where would it be negative? You are super smart. Tangent is y divided by x. Where would it be positive? And y3. Because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And yes, if you draw a line in the third quadrant, you would have that positive slope. So where would tangent be negative? 2 and 4. Whenever anybody asks me about positive or negative and sine and cosine and tangent, that's always what I think about, x and y. For some reason, people don't always think through that, and they need something else to help them. Kind of like my... And again... I actually never knew this. I didn't know this until I started teaching, and some students started saying it, and uh, it, it was sitting in a book somewhere, right? I never learned this. I always did it just like we did. All students take calculus. Now, you might wonder, what the heck does that have to do with what we just drew up there? All of them are positive in the first. Sine is positive in the second. Tangent is positive in the third. Cosine is positive in the fourth. If you're a person who needs never eat soggy waffles to be successful, fine. And maybe you want all students to take calculus. I personally don't really think of it, but I would say probably at least three-fourths of students use that. So good for you. Whatever helps, whatever works. That's our notes. Ready to apply it to a problem? Here we go. This is the most common IDK problem that I get on the test. When you write that, I get angry. And when I meet with your parents at conferences, I say this. This is a sign that your child is not trying hard enough in my class. And when they said, well, college trig is hard, and I say, not that hard. I could teach my six-year-old daughter to at least get part of this problem correct. And I'll prove my point to you so you can understand why it's unacceptable to write that. You do that, I promise I will be angry as I grade the rest of your test. Oh, I will be equally as angry. I will be equally as angry. I don't find any excuse because it says sine of t is negative four fifths. Find all six. So what should I write down? Which one do I already know? Yeah, sine of t is what? And cosecant? Yeah, I could teach my six-year-old daughter to do that. Yet I have people who don't even do that on the test. You make me angry, and you disappoint me because you're not trying hard enough if you don't do that. Is, it, can, is that fair to say that I can expect everybody to do that? No, I get it. After that, it's a little bit difficult. And if you can't do that, then what the conversation looks like is this. Hey, I understand that your, your, your child struggled with this piece, but they need to rethink their career being an engineer or computer programmer because they're not able to work through the first piece of real difficulty that they've seen this semester. That's what we talk about. And you're like, well, that's heavy. Yes, I don't mix words. Okay, this is college trig. You want to be a computer programmer, you're going to have to take Calc 3 and some other options. You want to be a doctor, you got a lot of math ahead of you. You want to be an engineer, welcome to physics. So we got to be ready. So here's what I do. I pull out the very simple formula that we just generated, which is sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. That's going to help me because I know what? I know sine. And being I know sine, I'll be able to figure out piece of cake upside down. 
And once I know cosine, sine divided by cosine is tangent. And these are just the reciprocals. No big deal. So let's square the value. Square it. 16 over 25. If I square it, will it be? If I square it, will it ever be negative? No. Here's the two mistakes people make. They either square it and make it negative, or instead of squaring it, they just write negative 4 fifths. You must square it. Plus, cosine squared is equal to, I'm going to write it as 25 over 25. What should I do now? Subtract. Cosine squared of theta is equal to 9 over 25. Square root, and you get cosine of theta is equal to positive or negative 3 fifths. Shoot. How do I figure out if it's positive or negative? Anybody see the key? So the third quadrant. So tangent's positive and cotangent will be positive. But cosine and secant will be negative. So I have negative three-fifths. So therefore, <laughs> negative five-thirds. How do I figure out tangent? Multiply by the reciprocal. I want to be clear. I totally get that people make mistakes. You might make a mistake on the test. But you cannot walk up to this test and say, I never knew how to understand that. Because I'm going to make you understand it. You're not going to take the test until you understand it. I'll keep you here until Thursday at 8 o'clock, Thursday night, doing those problems until you get it. Because I get sick and tired of grading that part of the test and mark in red all the time. I can't stand it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you, you, had a, you, you had negative then? Okay. Now, Ella raised a great point. Look at what I have here. Because the negatives canceled, this came out positive anyway, right? But my check with that is that it's in the third quadrant. And I know that tangent is positive in the third, correct? So that's part of the way that you check your results and your answers. Better? I'm going to hand out to you uh, your assignment, and you're going to do the first problem right now, and we're going to do the next two together in class. Problem number two right now. Okay? Uh, we'll figure that out and then we'll call her a day. We'll do problem two and three together and then the rest will be your homework. Now, you may be saying to yourselves, well, if I got one and I'm already doing four, I don't really need to pay attention to two and three. Yes, you do. I've designed them for problems that you're going to encounter. So, number two, because you're an excellent student and you're not going to write IDK, you see tangents 15 over 8. What are you going to write down right now? And, good, Mr. Gantz isn't super mad now when he grades your test. He's at least seeing you're trying. So uh, now it's different because does sine squared plus cosine squared equal 1, does that help you out? It doesn't. So I have to get one of the other ones. 1 plus tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. That's what I'm going to choose to use. And just a hint. You can always use sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 or this one. You never have to use the 1 plus cotangent squared. You can always end up using these. So uh, tangent, I square it, then what do I get? 225 over 64. So I'll change that 1 to what? 64 over 64 equals secant squared of theta. 64, 225. 29 over 64 is equal to secant squared. Root it, root it. 17 over 8 plus or minus is equal to secant of theta. Oh no, how do I decide whether it's positive or negative?
Let's check out the quadrants, folks. Is tangent positive or negative? Tangent's positive. In which quadrants is tangent positive? One and three. Is everybody okay with that? So I know I'm either working in the first quadrant or the third. Well, I also know that cosecant is less than zero. What does it mean to be less than zero? So cosecant is negative, so sine also has to be negative, right? In which quadrants is sine negative? Sine is your y value. Where is sine negative? Three and four. So which quadrant am I working in? I'm working in the third quadrant. What's positive in the third quadrant? Tangent. Everything else is negative. Can you see how people make a mistake with that on the test? That's why we have to practice finding out which quadrant we're in. So I've got secant is uh, negative 17 over 8. So what do I know now? 8 over 17. You guys are smart. You must have a good teacher. All right. Now I do sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. What do you give you square cosine? And remember, it's always positive. Equals 289 over 289. Notice how I always like to write 1 so that I have a common denominator. Saves me some time. I subtract the 64. Sine squared of theta is equal to 225 over 289. Root both sides. Sine of theta is what? Is it positive or negative? I've already decided it's negative. If you miss a negative on this test, folks, I don't just take off a half a point. I take off a whole point because a negative here is more than just doing some, you know, arithmetic incorrectly. It's not identifying the quadrants correctly. So it's, it's worth more. I don't want to take points off for missing your negatives, but trust me, I have times where people are like, oh, I never got that. So I'm just going to leave every, every, everything is positive and he'll probably give me some points. Depending on my attitude, I might take two off if you did that. Okay. Because you never even try to set up your quadrants. That's not that's that's a big part of the problem. Okay? All right, last one. As you notice, these all end up to be integers. I'm sorry, integer numerators and denominators, so rational numbers. This won't be that way. I have cosecant as negative four. You get a star quality of awesomeness, so you go negative four, negative one fourth, and you're on a roll. What do I do now? Yep, I'm going to do sine squared. Square of sine, what do you get? 1 over 16 plus cosine squared is equal to 16 over 16. Again, let's just be clear. Here's what people do to make a mistake. Number one, they come up with negative 1 16th, which is incorrect because when you square something, it's positive. Or instead, they put negative 1 fourth here and they never square it. You must square the value. I subtract, and I get cosine squared is equal to 15 over 16. Square root, cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the root of 15 over what? 4. So, you got to really focus to see if you can help me figure this part out. Quadrant. Sine positive or negative? negative. So which quadrants is sine negative in? Three and four. Tangent, positive or negative? It's less than zero, so it's negative. Where is tangent negative? Two and four. So which is the quadrant that we're working in? The fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, cosine and secant are positive. But sine and tangent are negative. So cosine is positive root of 15 over 4. If I flip it, I have 4 over the root of 15. Can I leave it like that? So you have 4 roots of 15 over 15. Hopefully you're used to that by now. We don't, you know, maybe don't even need to show work. All right.
tangent, how do I do that? Should I do one plus uh, tangent squared or secant squared? Or should I do uh, sine divided by cosine? Oh, let's just do sine divided by cosine. Negative one over four divided by root of 15 over four. Multiply by four over the root of 15. And I get negative one over 15, root of 15. Now, I can't leave it like that, can I? But just pause to save yourself some time. If this is tangent, what's cotangent? Just the reciprocal, right? I mean, cotangent is the reciprocal, so I could write down negative root of 15 right now. That one's done then. Now, if you do simplify this so you don't, or if you uh, rationalize the denominator, you get negative root of 15 over 15. But see, I don't want to do that and then flip it and simplify. It's just easier to flip it right away. You get my point? Are you capable of doing this? Did you know how to do this before you showed up today? Welcome to every day of second semester. You can figure this stuff out. We can work on it together. I am committed to making sure that all of you know how to do this before a test because I, I hate using red ink. Get to work.